Hey guys, my name is Max and welcome to Simple Biology. Today we're going to be talking about the cell cycle. Now the cell cycle is kind of a broad topic. It, uh, it covers everything that goes on from the time a cell is formed until the time a cell splits in order to form two more cells. Throughout this entire time, the cell is doing a, a huge amount of things because it has to sustain life and all the processes that involves. But we're just going to talk about the broad topic or the broad uh, things that happen during each kind of section of the cycle. So this will be important to know in order to put everything into place. First, we're going to kind of go in through the uh, the biggest topics or the biggest uh, subsections, I guess. And you can kind of see on the outside here, it goes. It's mostly this big blue band. And what this is, uh, this phase is called interphase. Actually, let me back up a little bit. This whole thing is kind of laid out like a clock. Uh, this line right here, after or where, where this where the blue starts, is kind of where uh, the cell would begin. And as it progresses through its life, it keeps going in a clockwise direction until it ends with mitosis and cytokinesis, which we'll talk about more in a minute. Essentially, it spends most of its time in this blue band known as interphase. So interphase is the is the longest uh, stage of the cell cycle. The cell actually uh, all cells actually alternate between uh, mitosis, which is known as M phase, and interphase. And actually, if you uh, you can kind of see cytokinesis and mitosis or M phase are separated in this diagram. Really, they would not be. Cytokinesis is a separate process, but they occur at mostly mostly the same time. So so um, the cell switches between interphase and mitosis. Interphase is further broken into the DNA synthesis phase or S phase as well as G1 and G2 phase. The G stands for gap. Originally biologists thought that nothing really went on during this time but now we've kind of found out that this is actually the time when the cell does a large majority of its work. This is where it's performing the function it's supposed to do. For example, a muscle will be contracting, a nerve cell will be uh, sending impulses. <coughs> so G1 and G2 are much more than a gap in the cell cycle. They're where a lot of the work happens. Again, like I said, interphase is the longest, part, uh, longest stage of the cell cycle. It's much longer than mitosis. You can easily see that with this diagram. Um, of the three parts of interphase, S phase is the longest part where the DNA is being synthesized. And during S phase, uh, or S phase actually takes up almost half of the cell cycle. So this is just where the DNA is just being synthesized. And if you think about it, a cell could have trillions of base pairs of DNA. So it, it, it makes actually quite a lot of sense that DNA synthesis would take so long. This is where all that DNA has to be perfectly replicated with incredible precision in order to not like create cancer and stuff. So that's kind of a brief overview. Uh, for the rest of this video we're going to be talking about different ways that the cell regulates the cell cycle. Uh, in this one we're going to be talking about, or at first we're going to talk about uh, different checkpoints that happen. So um, there are three major checkpoints. There are other checkpoints in the cell cycle but three that uh, stand out as the most important. They're known as the G1, G2, and M checkpoints. Each of these occurs at the end or near the end of their um, of their of those phases of the G1, G2, and M phases. <coughs> Furthermore, the G1 checkpoint, if uh, certain conditions are right, will send a cell into what's known as the G0 phase. And in the G0 phase, the cell uh, will not continue going on the cell cycle. It'll just sit there and kind of um, d d just wait until other conditions put it back into the G1 phase. This G0 phase is where they, it won't grow, it'll just perform its function. Many of the cells in, a, in your body are actually in this G0 phase. Most uh, neuron cells and muscle cells, uh, like I mentioned earlier, are actually in this G0 phase where uh, they're no longer dividing, no longer growing, but they still have an important function to play so they still live. In addition, there are other cells uh, that, like, such as your liver cells that are in that but less permanent. So they're in the G0 phase but can be taken back out if necessary. Those muscle and neuron cells actually uh, can't 
be taken out of GNOT phase uh, most of the time. Um, so next we're going to go into different uh, different mechanisms that will be involved in these checkpoints. Uh, you can kind of see these are where those checkpoints lie. Uh, I didn't I didn't show you this last time, but this is where this is where those checkpoints lie: the G1 the G1 checkpoint, the M checkpoint, and the G2 checkpoint. Mm -hmm. Essentially, what you need to know is that there is a compound called cyclin, and cyclin. The reason it gets, gets its name, uh, cycle cyclin is because its concentration rises and falls in cycles. So <clears throat> at different points of the site of the cell cycle, predictably is the important part. At predictable points of the cell cycle, the second concentration will rise and then later it will fall back again. And this always happens in the same places. It's important to know. There are certain uh, proteins known as cyclin-dependent kinases and their activity uh, modifies the cell cycle. So th these will be the uh, the these will be the proteins that allow the cell to go through a checkpoint or to be held back by a checkpoint. And the reason they're called cyclin dependent is because they're inactive unless cyclin is present. So when that cyclin concentration rises, those uh, cyclin dependent kinases will be activated and they'll uh, start doing their work. They'll allow the cell through the checkpoint. Later on, as the cyclin concentration falls, the cyclin dependent kinases will start being broken down, um, and then that will be what puts the cell back into a cycle. Uh, one of the most important of these cyclin dependent kinases is what's known as maturation promoting factor, or MPF. And this is the one that allows the cell past the G2 checkpoint. Now, uh, the reason this is one of the most important is because uh, without this one, it would the cell actually wouldn't go into mitosis, and so this is just kind of the last barrier before the cell begins mitosis. We'll be going into mitosis a lot in our next video, which is entitled mitosis. I should have mentioned that earlier. Uh, last thing on regulation, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about growth factors and some of the effects that can happen if we lose those. So, uh, like I, like I mentioned, growth factors, and there there are uh, I'm actually not sure how many, but I'm sure hundreds of growth factors, uh, and these all uh, stimulate cell division. That's why they're known as growth factors. It's a factor um, that plays a role in stimulating growth or cell division. And so a couple that are uh, pretty important that they kind of discovered in a laboratory, uh, the first is that um, density-dependent inhibition prevents crowded cells from dividing. In other words, uh, certain cells... Uh, such as like this, uh, epidermal cells and cells that are like on the inside lining membranes and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, will divide if there's an open space next to them, but will not if they're crowded around on all sides by other cells. What this allows is if there's a wound, those cells will divide to fill it up, but if, they're, if, if, this, if the skin or membrane is intact, those cells will not divide, um, because if they do divide, then you're just piling up random skill, uh, cells, and by not dividing, they leave a single uh, layer of cells, known as a membrane, around where they're supposed to be uh, sitting. The second one is anchorage dependence, and uh, essentially what this does, it, unless the cell is anchored uh, to something sturdy, uh, it will not divide, so this prevents loose cells from dividing. What this means is that a cell that is like floating in a beaker or something won't divide, but a cell that is uh, firm on a petri dish maybe will divide. And so the reason this is important is because if a cell breaks off into your like um, into into some fluid in your body, perhaps your blood, your body doesn't want it to start dividing because that'll uh, just clog up the fluid. On the other hand, if the cell is on the edge of the membrane where it's supposed to be, it will continue dividing. And so that's why that's important. Lastly, um, I mentioned cancer uh, briefly earlier. Cancer often results when this regulation fails. So if the cell no longer requires a growth factor in order to divide, then it'll start uh, dividing way more than it should, and this often leads to, can leads to some sort of tumor of cancer. And um, there are many other uh, ways that cancer can result almost all of them have to do with disrupting the cell cycle. So a lot of times the cell cycle 
is associated with cancer study. And so, again, that's why the cell cycle is important. But it's as simple as that.